This new tripod just got delivered today. I got it because it collapses down so I can take it with me when I go out hiking or biking and I can do videos outside again. My old tripod that I had since the 1990s, I got a lot of great use out of. Finally gave up the ghost about a month and a half ago. One of the reasons why I've been doing stuff outside. I was actually thinking about going outside and filming a video today outside, but we've got this storm coming in. It's brutally cold and windy outside and hopefully we'll get some snow. But I had my old tripod since the 1990s when we lived in England. And so I'm really hoping that this one lasts a long time and I get a lot of great use out of it as well. We shall see. I can almost get this tripod up to head height and it only weighs a couple pounds so I should be able to carry it around with me. I wanted to apologize also for not getting another video up on Jesus' practices of eating meals this week. I planned on doing the Lord's Supper, but I bit off more than I can chew for the past couple months and it finally caught up with me. I just finished up teaching a class on the parables for Fuller Theological Seminary and I had a great class. They were super engaged and very positive and worked really hard. All of the students were really encouraging to work with, and it's such a pleasure to work with a group like them. I'm also trying to finish off a course for academia.edu on video creation for academics. They asked me to teach this course and put it together for them. All the people that I think should be putting out video quality right now, I think it's academics, the people who have devoted their lives to studying and mastering a particular field of thought. I'm really excited about this because when I went through my graduate degrees, I never had any courses or training on how to create videos. And I really believe that in 2020s with the shift to online learning and pandemics and stuff like this, academics really need to master how to create videos to communicate their material, not only to their students, but also to a much wider audience as well. And then on top of all of this, my heart went into AFib again yesterday. The meds I have for occasions like this really did their job and within about four hours I was back in a beautiful sinus rhythm. It was so nice. But it really takes it out of you. It feels like you got hit over the head by a two by four. And that reminds me, perhaps I should give a quick update on my health. Since a lot of you don't know that I developed heart arrhythmia problems about a year and a half ago, right at the very start of the pandemic. Now I have to say that since this summer, things have been going great. My heart has only dropped out of rhythm twice. I've only needed to take my sort of medication to get me back in rhythm twice during that whole time. Haven't had to go to the hospital or anything like that. However, I do have probably three hospitalizations planned for this next year, but I've got a great medical team and I'm so thankful for them. The other thing that I'm very, very thankful for is that the technology and the medications they have now to kind of treat issues like this are so good. Of course, 100 years from now, they'll consider this pure butchery, but I'm pretty excited and glad about it right now. The second thing I'm very glad about is that we've got good insurance that covers my medical needs. The third thing that I'm very glad about is that of all the places on the earth to live, I live in a culture where we have access to this sort of medical technology and at a time in history when I have access to it as well. Of all the people who have ever walked the earth or are walking the earth now, there are so few that get access to this type of care that I have. I'm really quite privileged to be in this position that I'm in. Now the video I had planned for this week, and I've been working it on my computer, is on the Lord's Supper in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I really want to show how this, A, wasn't just a little sip of wine and a little wafer. My granddaughter went to another church this week I asked her how it was afterwards, and she complained about the wafer that they gave her during communion. The church that she goes to, they actually break a loaf of bread and you actually get a piece of bread when you take communion. And she thought it was so funny that they just had these little wafers. I had to inform her that the miracle of the Lord's Supper isn't that somehow the Lord is present in the bread and the wine, but rather that people actually call that little wafer bread. But I digress once again. Looking at how table fellowship and meals were practiced in the ancient Greco-Roman world, which the church went into, really helps us understand, A, what Jesus was doing with the Lord's Supper from a sociological point of view, 
and also B, what was taking place in Corinth, why this was such a big issue and such a big problem in the church there. Join me next week when I hope to have that video up. After that, I hope to jump into some of the readings from the lectionary as we go through the season of Advent and prepare our hearts for Christmas. Having said all that, join me next week as we look at 1 Corinthians, and then after that, as we look at the readings for Advent as we approach Christmas. Until then, I'm really hoping that this cold weather and the wind really pays off when we get a nice dumping of snow. This is the latest in Colorado's history that we've ever had snow in Colorado Springs, and we desperately need the moisture here. Until then, I'll leave you with the word of peace.